Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a day. As John tells the good news in a particular way, the drama unfolds and continues to build up as that story unfolds. And today's gospel is set in reaction to what has just taken place. This follows the famous account of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and what followed. Just imagine this scene for a moment. It was just yesterday when there was this commotion outside the city with reports of this Jesus from Nazareth, that he was back, and this time that he raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Quite a few people from the city were already there mourning with the family when Jesus called for the man to be undone from his burial cloths. As you can imagine, this set everyone who was there, and even those told about it, into a spin, to say the least. There has been some murmurings that there was some dissension, not only from the Pharisees about all this, but within Jesus' own community last night. Today, a lot of that same crowd joined with others to cheer Jesus as he arrives in Jerusalem. Now, a few of us Greeks, proselytes, have traveled to Jerusalem for the festival and want to know what is this good news that Jesus of Nazareth keeps talking about. We have now heard so much about this message and of Jesus and a promise of new life. Is this the new covenant, the new kingdom? Are we too included even though we're from Greeks? Will we now see the end of the Romans finally? There are just so many questions and thoughts. I understand this Philip fellow might be willing to get us a little closer. After all, he too is from Galilee, so he might not cut us off because we are Gentiles. So we we're saying to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. <laughs> Those five words that are offered to Philip pretty much sum up what our life of following Christ is all about, when you think about it. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We too wish to see, we too want to experience all that this message of new life, the promise of a new covenant and relationship with God is all about for ourselves. Even with as many times as we hear and share the story of Jesus, and especially with each and every Lent, we consider what it might mean for the invitation to experience truly a new covenant, a new relationship, a new direction, a new vision, to experience hope. 
As we prepare to celebrate, to worship, and to experience the meaning and depth of what Holy Week is all about, either for the very first time or as a way of reconnecting with the power of this good news, we need to realize that what we seek and all that we do is really the same thing that these Greek Gentiles are seeking in the scene from John. So let us experience and know for ourselves this good news that changes everything. In a world that is almost deliriously looking for meaning and for truth as it seeks certainty, in such uncertain and anxious times as these, it is easy to appreciate their desire to experience this message for themselves. The gospel isn't alone in this endeavor to reveal the way, the truth, and the life. In following Jesus, there is an invitation and promise to a new covenant, a new and right relationship with God himself that is now available. A new relationship is at the heart of it all. As it is proclaimed by the prophet Jeremiah, the mission of God includes a new covenant that is possible because of a new and right relationship with God. We heard just a few moments ago, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Not a do-it-yourself plan, not a do-over, but something entirely different. And we need only to read on in the Old Testament to see what is proclaimed was true for God's people on the prophet's own time and place. And yet, do they get it? But there's still so much more to that story. The message of hope is part of the bigger picture of God's plan of salvation. This message is true for us today as we once again prepare to journey with Christ into the very heart of our story, as we do with every Holy Week. And yet I know this to be true for our own cultural context as well. We need to see Jesus. What we prepare to proclaim in worship, word, and action, the good news is an invitation to experience not just a wonderful moment in our liturgical year, but it is the very embodiment of the pivotal moment, the Christ event, the occasion of transformation, an absolute change that is truly embraced because we realize that life cannot continue as it has. That was the rub for Jeremiah. But it's still the rub for us, and not just the Greek proselytes, but us here and now. It is rather obvious within these past 12 months of the pandemic that life is not as it was, that these are extraordinary times. Why would we seek the same old approach, therefore? How was it? Not so with the fundamental, how was it not so with the fundamental aspects of our lives, the very fundamental aspect of our lives, our spiritual life, our relationship with God? How could it not be true for that, too? For the prophet Jeremiah's time, there is a basic question why would we desire the same old covenant that we seemingly cannot remember nor live into? Why would we? Uh, allow an old, out-of-touch order to continue in the first place. With the Greek pilgrim to Jerusalem, why would we not wish to see Jesus and this message of a new covenant, a new relationship, a new life? Why would we not now? How about us here and now, you and me? Lest we think that this message is simply for those who have yet to know Christ, let us once again ask in this Lent, who are we kidding? What are we, do, what are we doing with these old, worn-out, suddenly inadequate ways of looking at our neighbors, looking at ourselves, and most of all, looking at God? What are we truly seeking? Simply a return to an old way or a perception of that world and our life and our whole new, or a whole new take on life, a whole new perspective and vision and hope Within the church, we too must be longing for that new covenant, ever-renewing covenant, an ever-deepening and direct true relationship with God, and to see Jesus once more, or even for the very first time, truly and deeply as he is. What the Greeks are asking is, I believe, the lens we need to, uh, need to look at 
for all that we do and what we're about in the church, in our homes, in the world. Whether in worship, our personal spiritual learning and formation, our fellowship, whether it's limited or when we can resume it fully, our service to others, if we're truly attending to the heart of the matter, then with all that we do, we too are seeking to see Jesus in the world. We affirm this within our baptismal covenant. Do you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbor as yourself? If we truly seek to see Jesus in all that we're about as a church, we no longer are simply organizing programs or events. We live out a spiritual practice, practices, something we've been exploring this year within our Lenten series, practices that speak to our relationship and affirm the identity that is proclaimed, and more than something we occasionally do when we can remember to do it, a spiritual practice is part of who we are and what makes you truly you and me. And yet Jesus is not done. If we're seeking to see Jesus, we realize that the Christian life is an invitation to journey deeper still. What is asked by the Greek visitors to Philip is asked to each of us as well. To follow Christ is to realize that any given moment, at any given time, you might be asked to be Philip. Someone might just ask you, I wish to see Jesus. I wish to know what this is all about that you love so much. And how would you respond? Remember that it was Anglican's own William Temple who pointed out that the church is the only institution that exists for those who stand outside it, not within it. In this crisis of the pandemic, within these extraordinary times, there are so many people outside who are in need, whose lives cannot continue the same way as they once did. They too are saying, sir, we wish to see Jesus. How do we respond? Do we invite them? Do we invite them to sit with us? Do we invite them to go with us? Do we invite them to come along and pound a nail or paint a house or feed people or bring food? What do we do to show them Jesus? The request may come in words or even action. They may come from Miami Avenue or down the hallway in your own home. As you might be asked to be Philip in your own way, please do what he did. Open the door and make Christ known. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world.
Grant, Almighty God, that all who do confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety and for the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially Anne, Elizabeth, Gloria, Greer, Jane, Pax, Peggy, Susan, Tom, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Carol and Darlene, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, inspire each of us to reach out during this Lenten season of transformation to those facing life's challenges and changes. Guide and empower our Stephen ministers and leaders as they provide spiritual companionship to those in need of support and understanding. And in prayerful consideration, may you give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care-receiving relationship the courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk alongside them. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we to celebrate, celebrate his, his death and, and resurrection, resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come, you are part of the kingdom. Using the prayer adapted by our national cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepting us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this, your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 